Welcome to another episode of Casting Starcraft with Daylac. Today, bringing you a master level game on Daybreak LE. In the purple shorts as Terran, we have Danis Guards, and in the orange shorts as Protoss, we have TSI's Crawlman. Crawlman, a member of Team StarCraft 2 Improve, known for helping lower level players try and uh, improve their gameplay in a, a friendly environment. And uh, they often frequently do small tournaments. Crawlman himself from Sweden, but both of these players, master level on the EU realm, duking it out today on Daybreak. Now, as Protoss versus Terran, I'm expecting to see a lot of uh, Marine Marauder Medivac versus Protoss as Terran. It's a very strong opening for Terran against uh, Protoss opponents, as well as uh, probably some ghost play transitioning later on into uh, Vikings as well for obviously dealing with Colossi. And it wouldn't surprise me to see a lot of drop play on Daybreak with some good opportunities to drop from a player's sixth base on uh, this side here uh, due to the short distance and the free space around the bottom of each of the bases. As for Protoss uh, against Terror, now it's probably going to be a case of Blink, Stalker and Colossus into Templar Archon. Daybreak being actually a, a fantastic map, very makes for good, very intense battles with some fantastically well balanced for, for both races with the open areas that Terran will want for the, the concaves in the middle sections as well as the tighter chokes that Protoss will want. Of course knocking down these destructible rocks very important for Terran against Protoss on this map as they need the uh, the quicker reinforcement route and uh, control of the Zelnaga watchtowers also being very important for uh, attack and defense here as they cover such a huge chunk of this map though they do still leave the um, middle sections of the map around here available for stealthy go-bys. Crawlman uh, scouting now actually against Danis Guards who has uh, walled in slightly with uh, by dropping a supply depot and then leaving it to finish his barracks which is just going to finish up now and we already see the orbital command coming out now at uh, 2 minutes 50 here which is a uh, standard opening for Terran here with the wall in not finishing that supply depot wait there we go SCV's just going now and uh, Danis Guards own SCV heading off to try and get what information he can from Crawlman's base who actually appears to have left his probe by the Zelnaga Watchtower, providing huge amounts of vision to see if uh, any early attacks from uh, Terran are incoming. Looks like Danis God's here actually wanting to play for a, a fast expand build versus Protoss, and uh, Cybernetics Core already coming down for, for Crawlman with a bit of a, a fast gas there, looking obviously to go for early Stalker play, maybe even into uh, Blink Stalkers pretty quickly. In fact, we already see the first Stalker now uh, being chrono boosted out, and that SEV is going to see this and going to try and perhaps deny the early Nexus there. And looks like a little bit of a tussle, throwing down a supply depot to block this. I actually like this choice by Danis Guards here to deny the Nexus of uh, Crawlman for a little bit longer while building up his own uh, economy at his own side, with uh, obviously his own command center being halfway done now with a bunker thrown down at the front for protection against those early Protoss pushes. Trying to bring that SCV back now and getting the cancel on that. So Crawlman's expansion here delayed by uh, a minute or so which will have a bit of an effect on his economy. It's difficult to say whether or not that will have such a huge effect early on depending on how his own uh, harassment goes. Especially with the new oracles now available for Protoss with the Mothership Core that have the potential to cause quite a lot of damage to Terran. In fact, the Mothership Core just coming out now for Crawlman, and uh, that can be used not only for defense, but a little bit of early harass. And if he goes for Oracle play, then we might see some uh, excellent worker harass coming off here as well. Additional barracks being finished now for uh, Danis Guards and immediately getting a tech lab add on on one of them for those uh, Marauders. And uh, a Stalker here sitting at the front of the base to uh, see what's going on there. Bunker, of course, means that he's not going to be able to get any uh, harass off at this particular point in time. Um, but it will be nice to see. But he does actually have his Mothership Core coming over. I actually kind of like this choice. It's a very useful unit for harass early on, though not many people uh, I've seen use it in that way, preferring instead to use the Oracles for harass. But the Mothership Core actually has quite a chunk of damage, but it'll be important not to lose it to these uh, Marines here. And he does use it as an opportunity to get some scouting information, seeing that uh, Danis Gods has taken both of his gas, so you can determine that he's going the standard 
bio play here, most likely known for uh, playing against uh, Protoss. So, Marine Marauder Medivac with Stim already on the way. In fact, we should see the factory being built there, and as soon as that's finished, we'll see a starport coming out. And the first Marauder already down for Danis Gods. Looking now here, we've got the robotics facility on the way. Chroma moving into that Colossus gameplay, which will be a uh, so important against that bio army. The Templar is also uh, a very good choice, especially with the uh, Sonic Storm ability and uh, the available splash damage. And the robotics bay there as well. Currently getting out his uh, observers to uh, try and find out what his opponent's doing and keeping his forces, pulling them back slightly. Though he's not elected to take his own Zelnaga Watchtower, I think that's feel like that's a little bit of a, a mistake there. As uh, with Terran drop potential here, as the starport finishes up, could be uh, could be pretty huge. But we do see a, a probe going out now to uh, take that, and already upgrades for both of them on the way. Plus one weapons for Terran and plus one ground armor for Protoss. Interesting to note that split actually, with plus one ground weapons being very important for Terran as they're mostly ranged, and the idea being that you try and kite your opponents as much as possible. Whereas uh, for Protoss, having the armor against Terran is going to be much more important. And we do see the Observer now heading across to Danis God's base, trying to uh, keep an eye on just what's going on at his opponent's side. We do see actually one gas down there, and uh, second gas being taken for Protoss. Colossus being quite gas heavy, so it was not going to surprise me to see if he uh, chrono boosts out this Colossus. In fact, that is exactly what he's going for now, and uh, that will hopefully help shut down some of the potential damage from this first potential push uh, from Danis Gods. At which uh, I'm expecting to see head out at about the 10 minute mark. It's usually the standard attack timing for Terran here, about the uh, 10 minute mark, as you can expect plus one to be finishing, Stim to uh, be just about finished, Combat Shield to be well on the way. And of course the uh, first two medivacs are usually out just in time for uh, a 10 minute push out. Though we could see this as either a drop or a straight push in through the front door. Though obviously Crawman having going to have some uh, ob sentries in his force, which means he can potentially force field off uh, the ramp here, provided that he sees the incoming force, which he does know about thanks to this probe at the Zelnaga Watchtower. And we're already seeing extended thermal lands being researched now. Danis God's actually electing to split his forces. I don't know whether that's just due to pathing or simply a mistake on his behalf there. Uh, but the second probe here is going to see both the forces incoming around the side, stimming in one marine to take that out. Of course, with the observer there, Crawman is well aware of what's going on, has pulled his army forwards here, ready to force field out if need be. But he best be careful not to lose that stalker. It's on its own. That could have been a worthwhile mistake there from uh, Crawman if it had been caught by those marauders. Uh, though Concussive Shell isn't actually finished yet, that's an interesting choice. It's usually needed against Protoss to be able to kite those uh, Stalkers around with Marauders, otherwise they're just simply too quick. But we do see more barracks being thrown down now, and uh, Dennis God's actually electing to expand again, uh, having pushed out with this force, though he's now retreating. Uh, Crawman actually moving some Stalkers into position just in case of that drop play and does have an Observer there between the 6th and his main to see if any uh, potential drops are incoming. Also expanding to a, uh, a third here, though the Marine scouting that very quickly will be taken out by this Stalker in short order, but he does now have the potential to hit the third as he does know that it's there. But we, I do see a proxy pilot up here from Crawman, so we could see some uh, proxy play here. Oh, and two loaded dropships heading out now. Could see the beginnings of a first drop against the base. It will be scouted by the observer though that's here hovering right there, so Crawman should be have more than enough time to react to this. And we'll be able to uh, stop that in short order. In fact, we see a photon cannon trying to come down now. Uh, photon overcharge going down on the Nexus to uh, help do some damage there. Time warp slowing down that unit's DPS. That's a huge force there. He does try and pick up and does manage to get away with one medivac full of uh, units, leaving it hovering over there. It's a very costly attack there for Danis Gods. Not actually able to inflict too much damage, but losing one entire medivac full of units and the medivac as well. Very expensive mistake, but attempting here to redrop now. Uh, if he can pick off that pylon, that could have some ramifications for Crawman, but he is moving in now to uh, to deal with that. If Danis Gods isn't paying attention though, he's going to lose this force. Medivac goes down, 
and that drop is going to be terminated in short order by Crawman, having done almost no damage to any of uh, his opponents. Uh, to Den uh, Dennis Gods having done no damage to any of his opponents' tech structures here. Crawman's main army, they're actually hovering around the third. Which is uh, an interesting choice, especially given how damaged it is. And we do see another drop coming in here and dealing damage, so clearly uh, his opponent's been... Dennis Gods has been dropping him on a, a regular basis there. Building up uh, a nice bioforce in the middle, already got a, a nice chunk of Vikings out, ready to deal with those Colossi. Sending some scouting marines off here. And I do see Stonic Storm coming down from Crawlman. That's actually a, a very worthwhile choice. Uh, given his opponent's mostly bio composition, the potential for Colossus and Storm, that splash damage being very strong against uh, bio style gameplay. And can inflict maximum amount of damage unless Dinos Gods is really on the ball with the splits. And if nothing else, the Templars being able to feed back Medivacs to instantly take them out of the fight is uh, a very very known tactic for uh, Protoss as it cuts out Terran's ability to stim without obviously uh, saving themselves from all that damage that can be thrown out. That force moving out now, Scam coming down, trying to locate the army of Crawman, taking the Zelnaga Watchtower. Couple of High Templars out now. Psionic Storm has finished. Do they have enough energy? Yes, both the Templars have enough energy to execute this if need be. It looks like Dennis Gods is going to move in on this third base. He does take it out, but one Storm goes down. Does a nice amount of damage there. Colossus catching a few hits on some of those Terrans. Uh, Crawman instantly throwing down another Nexus. It has actually supply blocked him, the loss of the Nexus and the pile on there. And uh, Dennis Gods on the back of this attack actually preparing to expand again. It's very greedy here, very macro-oriented gameplay. I actually quite, I quite, quite like this choice, as uh, having a stronger economy than his Protoss opponent is going to make a lot here. I mean, he's already up 192 supply to uh, 158, and is now tearing down the rocks in the middle. That's going to help his reinforcement path quite a lot. And he's got his Vikings here on patrol, seeing if they can uh, look to have a bit of a scout and potentially snipe off any wandering colossi. Dennis God's actually playing very much on the offensive here. Crawman's going to have a bit of difficulty trying to take this uh, expansion, especially with that large force there. And in fact, if he doesn't get the cancel off on it, and he doesn't, that was a 400 mineral, very costly mistake there by Crawman. Uh, Dennis God's Vikings here looking to come in around the side, trying to catch those colossi. But he's actually out of position from his main army. He could lose all of these Vikings here, and he does. He does take out one Colossus, though, it looks like. Yes, he gets one, but he's losing all these Vikings. Will he get the second Colossus? No, he won't get the second Colossus, but this Stim Force Marines from the side looks like it may be able to push through and do that. Storm's coming down from all sides here. Crawman inflicting terrible losses on his opponent, but he does lose the second Colossus. This is such a, a massive fight. Bioforce dropping on all sides here, still fairly even in supply though, Dennis got supply dripping, dipping lower than Crawman's now, losing a huge chunk of bio, but losing those two colossi was very costly for Crawman, but not nearly as costly as Dennis God's losing that huge force of Vikings. That was uh, very poorly handled there by Dennis God's, and is a very, very costly mistake but he should be able to uh, try and get those back as, uh, as quickly as possible, but I'm not actually seeing any more being built, focusing on replenishing his supply of uh, medivacs first. Very important there, but he is expanding out now to take a fourth base in the middle of the map, and very quickly getting his uh, economy back up. Uh, wondering though whether or not he'll like to turn this into uh, a PF, given its slightly exposed nature, but no, he is going orbital command again on that one, obviously wanting the extra income from, from the mules. Pushing back out again though, trying to uh, keep his opponent's fourth base uh, denied here, stopping him from being able to expand out to this middle location. Terran of course preferring to fight in the open middle ground. And we already see Terran Infantry Weapons 3 coming out here, he's moving in to try and snipe this third base of uh, Crawman's again. If he can do this, it's going to set Crawman's economy back so much and it does in fact go down again will he take any of the probes with it no electing just to snipe the nexus and back out but over on the left hand side of the map we see a force of zealots coming down here to try and inflict some damage to Danis god's third base getting in here going straight for the scvs but he is pulling them and uh looks like he has some forces heading over to deal with that in short order in the interim time though crawman got a force here moving out across the map 
will he try and engage here? This choke point here being a perfect place for uh, Crawman to engage his uh, Terran opponent, if any. This looks could be interesting, especially with charge finishing up here, meaning the Zelt's going to be able to engage with those Marines and Marauders much faster, get a lot of damage off. Scan goes down though, Danis God's now more than aware that that force is incoming, but Crawlman using this as an opportunity to set up this fourth base and once again trying to retake that third. Danis God's actually got a huge lead in supply at the moment over Crawlman, 182 to uh, 158. Far larger force at this point in time. We do see a fight coming in if he can. Uh, Snipe that Nexus without the cancel going off, that will be another huge victory, but no, Crawman does get the cancel this time. Danis God's very large bio force here, but his opponent has more than a few High Templars, all of whom have more than enough energy to cast multiple repeated storms. Protoss Ground Weapons 3 finishing up now on the way, as uh, Terran Ground Weapons 3 is uh, just about completing. So interesting choice he looks like he's uh, switching more into zealot colossus templar here against this this bio force though the lack of uh, stalkers not knowing how many vikings his opponents got could be uh, pretty big but danis god's not actually uh, resupplying on his vikings despite his opponent's colossus count and that terran force dripping uh, trickling in there that's not the uh, an ideal situation for danis god's wanting to uh, engage with a, a fairly large concave rather than in small dribs and drabs where his opponent can pick them off. Crawman finally taking this uh, fourth base of his again and we do see Danis God's already throwing down another command center looking to take a fifth being very proactive here but this is a huge drop now heading into Crawman's base he's not even where this there he has the one high Templar it runs it gets off one storm though doesn't do enough damage though it looks like Crawman is going to have a difficult time here depending on how much Danis God's can take out his technology here he loses a gate one gate's already gone down the Colossus are coming in to try and support this though the Zell's causing large amounts of damage a couple of nice storms there the force fields really helping to cut off Danis God's army it's already dropped down from almost 200 supply to 160 supply, but he still has a 20 supply lead over his opponent, looking to try and do as much damage as possible. He picks up though and boosts out, dipping there below Crawman uh, again in terms of supply, but only having dealt minor amounts of damage. Crawman though having a uh, fairly large bank of uh, minerals here and gas, but it looks like we could see another big Terran drop in a second from Danis Gods. No, he is in fact actually electing to pull back over the map, but he has got the ghosts on the way. Those archons, uh, those, those storms, and the potential for archons uh, is going to warrant the uh, the ghost attention here, and uh, I, I like that choice as the storms can easily be shut down with a few well placed snipes or EMP rounds from ghosts to uh, take out the energy or even take out the uh, the archon uh, the uh, templars before they even get into the fight. Uh, Crawman actually having a, a fairly strong. Templar count at the moment. Six Templars is a lot of storms, and uh, after the storms being expended, straight away you can get three Archons. A lot of splash versus that bio force. The only three Vikings for Danis Gods at this point, though, is uh, going to be very difficult against those Colossus, especially with the number of Stalkers. If Crawman is able to uh, micro his uh, Stalkers into hitting the the Vikings before they can deal substantial damage to his opponent's Colossi. We already see a couple of Archons being added into the, the mix now. Both these players are still on uh, fairly even supply. Danis God's holding the center of the map on his side uh, quite happily. Crawman's bio, uh, Crawman's uh, Protoss Ball, uh, all nice and happy guarding his fourth base. And both players now taking fifth bases. Danis God's already set up and ready to go though, just going to bring some workers over, probably even start muling there, whereas uh, Crawman's going to have to wait for this to finish, finish up. The income tab uh, actually heavily in favor of uh, the Terran player at the moment, who looks like he's going to try and get some denial off here, uh, if he can stop that. But the Templar does get the snipe on the medivac, preventing him from being able to pull that out, and it looks like will he be able to snipe that Templar? He does snipe the Templar, but it does cost him that small force there. And in the interim time, while that army's pulled down, it looks like Danis Gods is going to go in for a push across the map, but he backs out. Scanning, seeing all those Templar very afraid to engage despite the large number of ghosts he's got with this army. We see a Dark Shrine finishing up now for Crawman. Probably going to see some 
Dark Templars mixed into this force. Very useful for harassing, probably trying to get those into his opponent's mineral line and cripple that economic advantage that Danis Gods currently has. But well, both players almost maxed out on 200-200 supply. There's going to be a lot of dancing around on this map. Uh, Protoss versus Terran need to be very careful on this map. They want to make sure they try and get the engages right. The last thing they want to do is get caught in a choke against the Protoss ball. But the uh, Viking count now back up to a suitable level to try and deal with those Colossi. But the Stalkers blinking in. Do they manage to snipe one? Not at this point in time. Actually seeing another proxy pilot being set up in this top corner, uh, ready to probably warp in some DTs or Zealots to go and harass his opponent's uh, fifth base up here. And uh, it looks like uh, Danis Gods is actually preparing to take a sixth base, having that command center come down. This bio ball here. Ooh, losing some of those uh, Vikings. That's a costly mistake for Danis Gods needs to replenish on those as quickly as possible to deal with his opponent's uh, Colossus count of uh, three at the moment, which can do massive amounts of damage to the Terran bio composition. You see the ghosts here wandering around the map, separated from the main army, actually coming up to deal with some DT harass on the, uh, the top side. Not actually. Has he even spotted that proxy pile? No, he doesn't know about the proxy pile on there. That's going to mean Crawman can keep on harassing from that top corner with absolute impunity. Though he is, uh, Dennis Gods now setting up some extra missile turrets uh, around about the middle of the map, and it looks like we've got a little engage here, losing some more of those Vikings. It's a costly mistake there for Dennis Gods every single time. By losing those uh, Vikings, it's going to cause so many problems uh, when it comes to taking out those uh, that large number of Colossi. We do actually see more Dark Templars here coming out for Crawman. Potential for some more harass, or even mixing them into the main bulk of his army to uh, help take out those weaker Terran bio units. A lot of dancing about on this particular engagement, though, and. Uh, Dennis God's now having sense towers set up in the uh, the middle of the map, knows exactly where his opponent's main bulk of his army is. It's going to turn into, uh, it looks like it's going to actually turn into a very long and protracted, drawn out game. Uh, Crawman actually got a lot of bank at the moment. Picking off units when he can snipe them here and there. Both players seeming to be fairly afraid actually to uh, engage one another directly. Though, um, Dennis Gods looks like he's going to try and bring this ball around a little bit, but knowing exactly where the Protoss army is, keeps moving backwards and forwards, so this could be a big engagement here. Stalks blink in, they do manage to take out one of the uh, the Vikings, the storms go down, and he's losing so many of those ghosts, but he still has such a huge number left over. More and more storms devastating that bio force, though very quickly resupplying on the sheer amount of production and preventing that Protoss 6th base. Bit of a win there, I'd say, for Danis Guards having taken out and denied that expansion again to Protoss. But it looks like Crawman coming in for another engage. The Observer there helping him take out some more of those ghosts, stopping them from getting to the High Templars, morphing them now actually into Archons. But he's left them over to one side. He could lose these here. And in fact, he has. That's two down. Will he lose a third? That's three down. But in response, Danis Guards is losing those Vikings to the simple stalkers and this is a huge engagement here. Crawman absolutely shredding his opponent's bioforce with having no vikings there to deal with those uh, colossi and doing so much damage but Crawman backing out here despite having more supply than his opponent. The uh, DT's coming in now though causing absolute chaos. Scan goes down doing, trying to uh, take those out as quickly as possible. Stalkers blinking forwards again but it looks like the uh, the remainder of the ghosts are going to be taken out and Danis goes down to 96 supply. That is a huge cut down in supply there for the Terran player and Crawman still on 156 having a huge lead now in terms of army over his opponent and Zealots are actually coming into this top side corner here trying to deal as much damage as possible to his base. Danis God's getting a, a good lift off here but will he lose any Zealot, uh, will he lose any stalk, uh, any SUVs to this? It looks like he loses a couple but his force has come up and is going to more than happily shut down that Zealot push in short order. Meanwhile more Colossus are coming out here for Crawman. Uh, actually got five on the field currently 
seeing some more Archons coming down here and uh, a decent number of High Templar still so a lot of storms available trying to get some scouts there from Danisgods with uh, SCVs but again a lot of dancing around for position on Daybreak here uh, it's usually actually a very strong map for two base into a, a longer more protracted macro style game which is uh, what we've been seeing here but as you almost always know where your uh, opponent's army is um, however I'm surprised that we've not seen any uh, air Protoss here uh, as uh, the shorter air distances and the the huge amount of open uh, open airspace could mean that could be fairly strong a couple of well-placed void rays into his uh, opponent's uh, main or even onto the production structures while the armies are engaging could deal a lot of damage a little bit of scouting here looking to take out the uh, missile turret and if possible the sensor tower Will he get the sense out? He actually doesn't almost manage to snipe it, leaving it only on 30 HP. If he'd been able to take that, it would have limited Danis God's vision of the map somewhat. But again, Danis God's still down massively on supply here. 150 to opponents, 196. And in fact, that sense how does die to uh, the fire damage. interesting to see here Croman actually maxed out now leaving his opponent uh, leaving his army by his uh, by the middle of the map probably expect to see a larger engagement uh, sometime soon Protoss of course wanting to try and fight in these choke points but Terran wanting to try and pull them down onto the lower ground and Dennis God's actually expanding again to keep his economy strong Still got a very small Viking count, only one Viking currently out on the field for Danis Guards. Uh, that's going to need a much bigger Viking count to help deal with that sheer number of Colossus now in his uh, opponent's Protoss Ball. As against this mostly bio composition, those Colossi are going to wreak absolutely, absolute havoc if uh, they get a good engage in a choke point. We see another actual attack up here. A little bit of a split off from Croman sending up some uh, stalkers there. Will he lose that high Templar? No, he doesn't. He does throw out a storm. It does catch some of those Marines unaware, but he goes forwards now, and he does in fact lose it. That was very a little bit of poor micro there. But his opponent is now currently distracted, split in two. This could be a finishing blow here. Croman moving in. That's one well placed storm, two well placed storms, three, four. Four storms go down. His opponent's bioforce melting away. Croman 160 supply to his opponent now, dipping below 100. That bioforce has been absolutely decimated, and this could well be game. Danis God's now on 47 supply. The Croman's 166, moving in now to that upper base. One of uh, Danis God's few remaining mining bases. And uh, yeah, it looks like this could well be a game over situation, given the Croman's at 178. And yep, there it is. Game over. Well played by Croman at the end there, catching his opponent's army completely split in two and being able to absolutely brutally decimate that with some very, very well placed storms. Uh, props go out there to the Protoss player Croman, a uh, member of Team StarCraft 2 Improve. Uh, hopefully we'll see some more games from him in the future. But still very well played by Danis Guards in that 38 minute game for doing uh, a lot of well placed macro gameplay from Terran though unfortunately dropping off there at the end. That has been another episode of Casting StarCraft 2 with Daylight. Hopefully that was an enjoyable one for you, and uh, I look forward to bringing you some more games in the near future. But for now, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and goodbye.